September 1944, Operation Market Garden is well underway at Arnhem in the Netherlands. The Allied troops on the ground are engaged in a furious fight with the German occupiers and are urgently in need of continued supplies. Coming to their aid are the DC-3 Dakotas of RAF Transport Command, one of which has taken an enormous amount of fire en route to the drop zone. Its wing is ablaze and looks certain to crash. However, this Dakota is being flown by Flight Lieutenant David Samuel Lord, who is determined to deliver his vital supplies. His sheer bravery and determination will ultimately prove worthy of the Victoria Cross. This is his story. Born on the 18th of October 1913 in Cork, Ireland, David Lord came into the world as one of three sons of Samuel and Mary Lord. His father, Samuel, was serving as a warrant officer in the Royal Welsh Fusiliers while Mary, his mother, raised their family despite the tragic loss of one of Lord's brothers during infancy. Following the conclusion of the First World War, the Lord family found themselves stationed in British India. It was during this time that David Lord's educational journey led him to Lucknow Convent School. Upon his father's retirement from the army, the family relocated back to the United Kingdom and set up home in Wrexham. David's academic path continued through St Mary's College in Aberystwyth and subsequently he pursued higher education at the University of Wales in Cardiff. Later, seeking to embark on a different path, David looked towards the church as he attended the English Ecclesiastical College in Valladolid in Spain. With aspirations of realising the childhood ambition and becoming a priest, However, upon reflection, after two years he realised that this wasn't the destined path for him. Returning to Wrexham briefly, he eventually made his way to London in the mid-1930s, where he embarked on a career as an independent freelance writer and journalist. The life and career of David Lord took another dramatic turn on August 6, 1936, when he enlisted as an airman in the Royal Air Force. His attitude and determination would see him quickly rise up through the ranks and he was promoted to corporal in August of 1938. Fueled by his continuous ambition and not wanting to stand still, he applied for pilot training, his application being accepted and on October 6, 1938 he was off to Hamble in Hampshire to join the No. 3 Elementary Flying Training School. Following his successful flying training, he earned his wings on April 5, 1939, and a promotion to sergeant soon after, on August 8 of that year. Having followed his father into a career in the British military, he would again follow a familiar family path and return to India, being posted to 31 Squadron, based in Lahore, arriving on 7 October 1939. Here, he was introduced to the biplane, bomber and transport aircraft, the Vickers Valentia, a well-used workhorse of an aircraft, having served the RAF since 1934, but by now, practically obsolete. It wouldn't be until June 1941 when 31 Squadron would finally be replacing their aircraft with something more modern, the Douglas DC-2 Dakota. Having recently been promoted to the rank of Flight Sergeant on April 1st of 1941, Lord's career reached new heights when he advanced to warrant officer status on October the 1st of the same year. Equal to his progress through the ranks was his flying status, notably marked by his official qualification as a DC-2K captain in December. Whilst Lord was developing his career, the unfolding wartime landscape in North Africa beckoned for additional support, prompting a call for reinforcements. In a strategic move, during October 1941, 31 Squadron deployed eight Dakotas along with their skilled crews to bolster land operations in Egypt and Libya, a detachment that engaged David Lord as one of the capable skippers. Following the incident-packed four-month detachment, Lord returned to India to resume the daily routine of supply and communications operations, and on the 12th of May 1942, he received his commission into the officer ranks as a pilot officer and shortly after followed a promotion to flying officer. The following months saw Lord, now operating the new DC-3 Dakotas, flying countless supply missions between India and Burma, and his flying contributions to the war had not gone unnoticed, 
Having first been mentioned in dispatches, on the 16th of July 1943, he was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross for his actions over Burma. Flying Officer Lord's service overseas was drawing to a close, however, and he returned to England in January 1944, duly promoted to acting flight lieutenant and posted to 271 Squadron of RAF Transport Command, based at RAF Doncaster in South Yorkshire. At this time, 271 Squadron were very much involved in the preparations for the invasion of Europe. As part of these preparations, the squadron was required to be closer to the south coast, and so on the 29th of February 1944, they were relocated to RAF Down Ampney in Wiltshire to begin training. Lord and 271 Squadron would be heavily involved in supply missions in support of the invasion. These missions would consist of equipment and ammunition drops, delivering paratroopers as well as tugging horse gliders loaded with British troops and equipment. The following months of March, April and May of 1944 would be spent doing intensive training and exercises to perfect these skills. Friday, June 2nd, 1944, at 1400 hours, RAF Down Ampney was sealed. This indicated to everyone that zero hour for Operation Neptune, the invasion of Europe, was imminent. It also was the day that David Lord, who had been serving as an Acton Flight Lieutenant, was promoted to the War Substantive rank of Flight Lieutenant. The following day, 3rd of June, the crews were given their briefing for Operation Tonga. Lord and his aircraft would be part of air flight and were responsible for the dropping of airborne troops to protect the left flank of the British Second Army landing on the Normandy beaches. 4th of June 1944, air flight crews were fully briefed, the landing zone had been studied and the Dakotas had received a paint job of three thick white stripes on their fuselage and wings. It was all systems go, except for the weather, which was dull and windy. It was decided that Operation Neptune should be delayed for 24 hours. On the morning of the 5th of June 1944, with a favourable weather report, Flight Lieutenant Lord and 271 Squadron Air Flight were ordered to take a short trip to nearby RAF Blake Hill Farm to collect their payload of paratroopers. And at 11pm that evening, Lord and his crew of Flying Officer Arga, Flying Officer McDonnell and Pilot Officer Ballantyne were loaded with their paratroopers, engines turning and ready to begin the invasion of Europe. In total, the 10 Dakotas of 271 Squadron Air Flight would be delivering 191 paratroopers, 40 containers, 35 kit bags and one bicycle. At 23.20, Lord was airborne and headed for France. Their route took them north initially to group into formation over Chedworth before turning south and entering the English Channel at Littlehampton. The journey over the Channel was incident free, but upon crossing the Normandy coast at La Homme, they began to experience anti-aircraft fire, although it was quite light. The flak continued all the way to the drop zone at Touffreville, just to the east of Caen, whereby Lord successfully delivered his payload. The anti-aircraft fire was again with them sporadically on the return to the coast, and Lord Dakota suffered damage to his wing flaps. But despite this, he safely crossed the English Channel and returned to base at RAF Blake Hill Farm, arriving at around 3am. In all, three aircraft received slight damage, but sadly one paratrooper was killed by a stray bullet. The remainder of the summer, 271 Squadron continued supply missions to support the ongoing invasion, as well as the evacuation of casualties. But in September of 1944, Flight Lieutenant Lord would fly his final missions. By the end of August, following the successful invasion, the Allied forces were pushing back the German forces and had been largely successful in expelling them from almost all of France and Belgium. Attention was now drawn to the still German-occupied Netherlands. A plan was being drawn up to create a 64-mile salient into German territory with a bridgehead over the lower Rhine River to the west of Arnhem. To achieve this, combined British and US airborne forces, followed up by British land forces, would need to capture nine bridges along the way. The drop of airborne forces was codenamed as Market, and the land forces was codenamed Garden. On Sunday, 17th of September, 1944, 
Operation Market Garden would commence, and 271 Squadron and Flight Lieutenant Lord would be heavily involved. On that first morning, 271 Squadron detailed 24 Dakota crews to tug horse eye gliders to land in Zone Sierra, near Arnhem, to part an RAF down Ampney at 0940. On this first mission, Flight Lieutenant Lord was not involved. Of the 24 Dakotas, 19 reached the landing zone safely and released their gliders, having experienced no enemy air opposition and minimal flak. The other five Dakotas experienced difficulties over Oxford due to poor weather and had to release their gliders early and abort the mission. The following morning, Monday the 18th of September, Lord was called into action. His Dakota, Kilo Golf 374, would be one of 24, repeating the same mission carried out the previous day, tugging horse gliders loaded with troops and equipment to land in Zone Sierra in Arnhem. Again, there was no air opposition experienced, however flak was reported to be slightly greater than what was seen the day before. But all the aircraft returned to Down Ampney safely. Tuesday, 19th of September 1944. 271 Squadron, having delivered their quarter of gliders, troops and equipment to Arnhem, were now preparing to switch responsibility to supply drops to sustain the ground campaign now underway. Their target was Supply Drop Zone Victor, just outside the centre of Arnhem. Unfortunately, unbeknown to the Allies, the Germans had now occupied this area, and having seen the drops in the earlier days, were now setting a trap for any further drops, consisting of four 20mm guns and at least one 88mm battery. Back at RAF Down Ampney, Lord's Dakota, Kilo Golf 374, along with 16 others, were loaded up with panniers of food supplies, ammunition and other vital equipment that the ground forces badly needed. The crew for this flight was Lord as Captain, Flying Officer Harold King, Navigator, Pilot Officer Richard Medhurst, the Co-Pilot, and Flying Officer Alec Ballantyne as Radio Operator. Also on board to handle the payload was a four-man team of Army dispatchers. Corporal Phil Nixon and drivers Len Harper, Arthur Rowbottom and James Ricketts. The 17 Dakotas began their journey at 12.30 in the afternoon. At the same time as the Dakotas of 271 Squadron were making their way to Arnhem, RAF short Stirling bombers who were overflying the Arnhem area were engaged by the German ground forces lying await at the drop zone. Several Stirlings were shot down. The surviving Stirling crews and the Allied witnesses on the ground were frantically attempting to message back to base that the Germans had set a trap and the Dakotas of 271 Squadron should abort. This message was not received and so Lord and his crew, along with 16 other Dakota crews, were unaware that they were flying straight into a trap. At approximately 3 in the afternoon, the 17 Dakotas had arrived at the rendezvous point ahead of the drop run. Their instructions were to fly at an altitude of 900 feet and a speed of 120 miles per hour. They were to hold a straight line on the run in to supply drop zone Victor. This would be perilous at the best of times, but with the Germans lying in wait, it was suicidal. As Lord neared the drop zone, he came under intense anti aircraft fire. The Allied troops on the ground were doing their best to help the Dakota crews by engaging with the enemy in a fierce firefight. Now, just four miles away from dropping his supplies and having sustained several flak hits, his right engine burst into flames. Despite this, he managed to keep his Dakota in a straight and level flight and successfully reached the drop zone and began to release his cargo. Now, departing the drop zone, Lord received word from his crew in the back that due to the container roller system being damaged by flak, two containers of ammunition had not been released and were still on board. Realising that this ammunition was vital to the troops on the ground, he made an unbelievable decision. Despite his right engine and large parts of the right wing ablaze, and realising the entire wing could fail at any moment, he turned his aircraft around and rejoined the drop run. The second run, again under intense anti-aircraft fire, took eight minutes to complete. Many Allied troops on the ground looked on in awe at the spectacle of the blazing Dakota. 
Major General Roy Uckhart, commander of the 1st Airborne Division, was quoted as saying that he looked on spellbound and speechless at the sight of the blazing Dakota fly through a hail of bullets not once, but twice, in order to complete its mission. He later went on to write, I dare say there is not a survivor of Arnhem who will ever forget, or want to forget, the courage we were privileged to witness in those terrible eight minutes. Once the remaining containers had left the aircraft, Lord shouted the order for his crew to bail out. No sooner had the words left his mouth, and the right wing finally gave way. The crippled Dakota plunged into the ground, killing everyone on board, with the exception of Flying Officer Harold King. He had been thrown clear as he was preparing to bail out, and miraculously, he survived. He was captured by the Germans and became a prisoner of war at Stalagluft I where he remained for the rest of the war. Remarkably, little was known about the deeds of Flight Lieutenant Lord on that day until the release of prisoners from Stalag Luft 1 at the end of the war. 271 Squadron records up to this point had simply recorded Dakota Kilo Golf 374 and its crew as missing. However, Flying Officer King, as well as POWs from the 10th Parachute Regiment, told the amazing heroic story upon their repatriation to Britain. A recommendation was immediately made that Flight Lieutenant David Samuel Lord be posthumously awarded the Victoria Cross. On the 13th of November 1945, this was approved, and on the 18th of December 1945, his parents received it in his honour at an investiture at Buckingham Palace. Both Lord's Distinguished Flying Cross and Victoria Cross medals were purchased in 1997 by Michael Ashcroft and now form part of the Ashcroft Gallery at the Imperial War Museum. David Lord was buried alongside his crew with full honours in the Arnhem Osterbeek War Cemetery. Today there are many plaques honouring him, including one at Wrexham Cathedral in Wales. Thanks for watching. Please take a moment to hit the like button and consider subscribing.